Welcome back to our discussion of timber framing hand tools. This is part three and we are going to discuss chisels and slicks. So the next sort of step in the process is to select a chisel and uh, a mallet and we, we carry basically three different uh, timber framing chisels. They're not very common, they're kind of hard to find. Part of the reason why they're difficult to find is the overall length of the tool. So sometimes we'll have people arrive for class with um, bench chisels, which are just way too small. If you're going to buy one chisel, the one and a half inch width chisel is the most effective and will allow you to cut just about any joint. One of the other things you need to consider when you're purchasing a timber framing chisel is whether you have a square edge or beveled edge. And we really recommend the beveled edge because it goes through the wood much more easily. We really like the Robert Sorby. It is a, a tang handle, so the steel from the blade actually goes up into the handle. It comes with a steel ring on the end so that the handle is well protected as you're hitting it. So this is one of the other manufacturers of chisels that we carry. It's made by Barr. Um, it's made in the U.S. so it is quite popular. You'll notice a bit of a difference in the handle uh, from the Robert Sorby. This is a socket handle. It can come out of the steel so you do need to be careful especially if the weather changes, humidity and so on, that you're picking up the steel of it. The last type of chisel that we carry is made in Japan. The steel is considerably harder than the other two Western chisels. It has a similar look and feel, but it is a little bit more well balanced, some people say. So in conjunction with using your chisel, you'll need a mallet. And this is our most favorite mallet. It is a neoprene hitting surface um, and a wood handle, and it has a lead bolt in the, in the base that gives it weight. So it's a 30 ounce mallet. And we've used quite a variety we find that this weight is ideal for doing a lot of timber framing. If it's heavier, you end up wearing yourself out trying to swim it, swing it. If it is lighter, you end up wearing yourself out trying to swing it. Uh, and the other part of it is that it is durable, lasts forever. I've never seen one of these fail. All right, so after you get done roughing out a mortise or a tenon using the chisels that Blueberry just talked about, you'd switch to a tool called a slick. And the slick, you'll notice, has a uh, considerably longer handle than the chisel. There's also no steel ferrule on the end, so it's not intended to be hit with a mallet. The slick is all just arm movement. And the idea with the slick is that you're taking off very thin shavings, maybe a 32nd to at most a 16th of an inch, so that you can pare back very precisely to the line that you scored with the scoring knife. As Gaius was saying, you're using just your body power to move a slick through the wood, and he is very strong in his upper body. <laughs> I'm not quite so much. So sometimes I'll use my hip to push it through the wood. Um, and So just think about as you're holding it in the store and trying to determine which one makes the most sense for you, think about how you'll end up using it the most. So the first one that I'm showing you is the bar slick. Uh, as Blueberry mentioned, that's made in the United States. One of the nice things about the bar is that it is, again, a socket style handle. So the handle can be removed from the chisel, uh, which makes it much easier to sharpen. You're just working with that instead of all of this put together. But again, you want to be careful when you're walking around um, carrying this that you hold it by the steel and not just by the handle. This is the Robert Sorby Slick. One of the things that we like about the Sorby is that it has a very long, flat surface here. So when you're working a big section of timber real estate, a uh, big tenon or a scarf joint, this helps you establish a flat surface. It has a very nice heft, thick handle here. It's easy to grip. And then last is the Japanese Slick. Um, of the three, this is the lightest. Much like the Japanese framing chisel, this is a lamination of two different steels. So there's a very high carbon content, hard, steel here for the cutting edge, laminated to a milder steel here, um, which just helps make the sharpening process a little bit easier. The other big difference is that the back side of this slick is concave, uh, and again, that eases the sharpening process because the, the manufacturer has basically removed some of the very hard steel from the back side of the slick, so you don't have to grind it away during the sharpening process. So in addition to all of those cutting tools, you need some way of sharpening them. In the vein of using hand tools, we like to use this guide. It's made by Veritas. It is called a honing guide, and it basically locks your chisel into a device that maintains one consistent angle while you're sharpening the tool. 
What we like about the Veritas is that it comes with this jig that allows you to specifically set the included angle on your chisel. So I've set this one up for 30 degrees. I can slide the chisel into the honing guide, lock it into place, and then remove this guide. You want to be careful as you're sliding that off so you don't slice your thumb. And then basically <clears throat> you can see that the guide holds the chisel at the correct angle as you slide back and forth on your cutting surface, whatever it is. This is a Japanese water stone. Selecting the device that you sharpen the chisel with is there are many options, not just the Japanese water stone, but the diamond stones and there are oil stones and sandpaper on glass. So there are many great options in that direction. Occasionally it's nice to be able to touch up your chisel without going through the process of setting it into the honing guide. Um, what we like to use is a leather strop, shelter branded. Um, this is a process that you do by hand. The leather strop has a little bit of give to it, so if you don't hold the angle just right, the leather will flex a bit to match the angle of the chisel. And you can expedite the stropping process by using a little bit of strop abrasive. This is an aluminum oxide powder that you sprinkle onto the strop. And it's just a nice way at your coffee break or lunchtime to get back to a very keen edge. We've been using uh, these tools and others for the timber frames that we uh, design and build for decades. If you have any interest in learning more about the tools, head over to our website, shelterinstitute.com. Also, if you're in the area, please stop in and see us. There's always someone here that can give you a face-to-face -face answer about a tool and sometimes even a demo. <laughs> Thanks for watching.